Hello there, and welcome back to Crafty Magic Arts. Today we'll be creating a brand new project, one that was inspired just absolutely randomly, and I decided to go ahead with it and do it, because why not? It's not as weird as some of my pieces, it's pretty weird. So I really do hope you enjoy, and let's get started. First, we're going to start off with this dollar store toy. I got it from Dollarama at some point or another as well as this two pack of other ponies that I also picked up probably from Dollarama. These are really low quality. Um, like you can see that everything really bends like very simply. Honestly, the thinnest plastic ever. This one's a little bit more durable, but it's kind of goofy looking and has a molded crown. So here is my actual design. This is going to be a type of Cerberus or Kerberus, a uh, three headed dog, um, but it's going to be a Dachshund. So it's going to be long. The idea is to use these three ponies to make it work. Four ponies, I guess. So with this one, I need the body. I don't need the head, so the head's gonna be put off to the side. Whereas the little ones, I need the heads. And I actually decide to use all three. So now I need to prep the ponies. I have to get rid of all the tails and then the manes. And getting them all ready is pretty simple. The hair's super thin, so it's not like, oh no, all this beautiful lush hair. It is truly not a loss. And here you can see that the body is looking okay, but I definitely don't need these wings, so I'm going to chop them off and put them off to the side for later. And there you go, the pony is looking okay, but it needs to be cut in half. I have two sides of the stack shown. And so first I need to decide where I want to cut, and then I chop it with my X-Acto blade. It's really easy, again, this plastic is super thin, so the chopping is super easy. Here you can see my idea and where I want the kind of body to lie. Let me trim this off. I do want to remove all of the hair, even though it's going to be fully covered. I just decided to get rid of it. But here is the ponies and they're looking okay. They're looking like things are happening at least. Um, but I think the legs are too long. The dachshunds are really short. They're really low to the ground. So I decided to make a good solid cut of their little feet and get those prepped. Don't worry, I assure you, nothing's gonna go to waste. So here you go, we are gonna chop off these feet and set them aside for later. Again, the plastic is so thin, I think my exacto blade was dull and still cut through it, so. In order for the heads to fit, I do need to actually squeeze them in here. So I do cut open the chest a little to allow for that. And also I am removing the ears cause I just won't need those anymore. Those ones have floppy ears. And while I cut the chest open, it turns out it won't fit three heads. It's only going to fit two, so I cut it right in half. And here I am getting the heads prepped for actually going into the body of the accent. I'm using bamboo skewers because why not? They are nice and sturdy, and those are going to be the extensions of the necks. Here is those feet. I promise I wouldn't waste. They are going to be used as the base of the pony's head to fit into the body. Really, nothing goes to waste. You can see I'm shoving things into that little foot thing. I actually fill up a ton of old plastic. The wings here being chopped up, they're being shoved into there. Instead of wasting it or throwing it in a drawer, I decided just to use it, so why not? I now I need to put the heads together, and the best way that I find is actually to put a wire through them. So I need to drill a hole through all of the ponies, um, just shoving the drill through there and getting them prepped for a wire. It's like eating jewelry, but with pony heads and legs. It's not creepy at all. It's gonna work fine. Um, but here you go, all the heads are ready, and now I just need to prep the wire. Easiest way to do it is definitely with a drill and a set of pliers. So once they're all ready, I then bead them up and uh, get ready for prom. I'm kidding, of course, but here you can see that I'm actually making sure the wire doesn't move and getting some hot glue in there. I do decide that it needs additional stability as well as just more of the pony. So the white pony, as you can see there, that is its body. And it was cut in half and used to help bring all the pieces together. Like I said, nothing was wasted. Here's the blue pony's feet being shoved in there as well as the orange pony's feet. Everything gets used and chopped up into little bits and then used as filler. It's uh, not gravel, but it works. It's a good use of all the different pieces. It looks creepy though when you when you think about it. It's okay. So here I am getting the dowel ready. I do drill a hole into it and then I put a bamboo skewer into it as I need to secure it into the front of the pony or the body. It is a dachshund, not a pony. And here you can see I'm measuring it, seeing how deep it'll need to be. I get that and then transcribe that depth into the bottom and then cut it. And my magical measurements work and it's a perfect fit. Here is the dachshund. It looks it's perfect already. Just so Dexwindy already. Just 
Beautiful, not a Frankenstein's monster of pony bits and glue. Speaking of bits, I also decided to use up some old 3D printer stuff. This is just like the rafts that we pulled off. And I actually heat them up and then wrap them on the base. It's a good filler. It's not the only filler I use, but this does help a lot. Uh, next, I do need to use aluminum foil to actually fill it up. And you can see here that I cover all of the pony heads. So they're pretty much just a core. That's all they are. They're definitely not being used for their shape or structure. They're literally there as just a, a core. Honestly, it's a good use of those ponies. They're not the greatest quality. And here I am finally using epoxy squat. I'm covering the entire base thing here um, to make sure that it's actually sturdy and secure and especially durable. There's a lot of different pieces shoved together here and if I were just to throw regular clay on it, I'm not sure it would actually hold. It might bend and then break. Epoxy Sculpt is incredibly durable, um, so this does just add additional security to all those extra pieces. You can see here I cover it all. I decide not to skip out on it, so everything that I had added gets covered with Epoxy Sculpt. Next, I'm actually moving on to foam clay. This is just some cheap dollar store clay I happen to have in my arsenal. Honestly, working with this stuff is pretty awful. It is incredibly sticky. It's like working with like marshmallow gum. Um, but I do manage to cover the whole piece, but it's definitely not anything other than just another layer. This poor dog has so many layers, it's turning into a cake. First, it's like the 3D stuff, then it's the foil, then it's the tape, and then it's the epoxy sculpt, and then it's the foam clay, and now it's DOS clay, and it's pretty much just a six layer cake at this point or you know parfait yeah little intermission here is my son's artwork he really wanted to show it off while we were making the video and i promised him i'd show it off it's his monster in creation and i'm incredibly proud of him isn't it great all right let's continue on with this duck swim so now we're covering in dust clay and i'm actually defining the features a lot more First, I do need to cover all this foam clay, um, but I am showing off a little bit more of the definition. You can see the necks and how they come into the body. Some of the dust clay actually dried, so it did take a little bit of elbow grease to get it where it is and get it like actually seamlessly blending, but I managed to make it work. Next, I'm back to epoxy sculpt because I am actually working on the details of the face. Now, I do decide that the nose and the nostrils and all that stuff are built out of epoxy salt because it really holds detail and also it is a lot more durable so if it gets knocked it's not that big a deal or is less likely to break or shatter i do actually really like this tool that i use for the nostrils here you can see that it presses in like the perfect indentation and i just love it but here you can see that the nose is remote looking great but then i move on to the eyes i decided to make pretty cartoony eyes. I didn't know I was going to do this when I first started this, but honestly, I'm not really liking how these turned out. They have just the regular eyes, and then I create a lid, and then I added some brows. And here you can see it on two of the heads. Try to keep them as similar as possible, but they are a little different. And here it is on the third head. I do want to add those cute little eyebrows. Now they each do have a little bit of a personality, um, or will have a little bit of a personality to them with their, their mouths. It won't be very clearly defined but it will work. Here is some pants that I am destroying. Now I've used this fabric before. I actually used it on another project, my Santa Pony. And it didn't catch a break then because it didn't stay green either. It got painted. Now the whole point of this is actually so I could create the Daxwind ears. With the head sculpted so close together, there was absolutely no way I was gonna get clay in there. So I figured the best way to do it is with fabric. So I create and cut out a template to make sure it's actually going to work on the Daxwind. I test it against the head. The paper template actually worked out incredibly well, and I end up using it for all six of the ears. All I do is I just flip it back and forth to make sure I have two that are actually mirrored from each other. Then it's just a matter of folding down the tab that I created in the top and putting it on the head. And here I am cutting out the remaining four. It's going a lot faster than it actually took it. I had to be careful cutting those out. So here I am sanding the body ever so slightly and then getting the toes on. So I'm again using epoxy sculpt for the toes and I'm doing it upside down. I use a foam as well as like a brick of foam for the tail so it doesn't crack when I'm sculpting. But it works really well as you can see here that it's there. Now the back feet were a little too short so I take a bit of like foam or something I had like lying around and I just elevate them ever so slightly they're just a tiny bit too short 
And here I'm actually working on the expressions. Each dog has a slightly different expression. This one seems to be a little bit more confused. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit more subdued, just basic kind of standard neutral expression. And the one in the middle actually is gonna look very happy. Now it's time to actually add the toes to the back feet. I do them in stages to make sure that I'm able to get it all done. And I'm smart. I actually, you know, sculpt them on cardboard. And then I think, you know, what's really smart also is putting toe beans onto the Dachshund uh, on the front while the back feet are drying on the back toes. So it's going to be a great idea. It was not. Don't do that. It's amazing how strong epoxy sculpt is. And I will tell you now, I did not learn my lesson. I'll show you why in a bit, but toe beans are back on after a little bit of glue, and then I move on to fixing up the tail because it cracked and covering it with epoxy sculpt to make it super durable. This is why we add epoxy sculpt for kids. It makes things durable. Oh, here's the example I was showing you. Literally attached my tile. I could not for the life of me get the back feet off. I thought it was still a good idea. No, 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 no. I had to carve this thing away, and it, like, teared it off. It did not, it was not recoverable, and I broke the back leg. I had to glue that sucker back on with some really strong super glue. Do as I say, not as I do. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now it's time to cover my puppy dog in some gesso, need a good base coat, and I love me some gesso. I've been using this stuff for years now, and actually for my anniversary, my husband got me another container. It's the best. It's the bomb. And so here you go. I'm covering up the ears a little more because they were not white enough. I'm using gesso this time. Last time I used a different paint. Um, but I need to cover both sides, but I'll do that later. And now I'm planning for the coloring. Now, I don't know if you guys know anything about Dachshunds. Man, do they come in the coolest colors. Um, there's my favorite is Pieball, which is like a big spotted kind of cow-like black and white. They also come in like light brown and dark brown spotted pieball which is awesome but there's also the more traditional colors like the black and tan so i decided to do all three why not right i got three heads i can make this work so here i am coloring the one side with pieball but then decide to go to the other side and add the black and tan really just go all over the place with this i am mixing my colors and saving them as i go and it's a great idea i do recommend this um and you can see here that i actually do have a clear line between the two sides and then the pie ball on one side and the pie ball on the other and the black and tan in the middle. Um, this really comes together in the end because I actually do extend the black and tan on the butt area, but the sides are the pie ball. It's, it's a lot of fun. I also decide to pull the black and tan into the like eyebrows because I find them to help be defining. Um, so that's one way to do it. And here I am adding the spots to the brown pie ball side. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. And then just like the black and tan, they need those like tan, like chest marks and back feet and front feet. So I kind of am going all over the place. It's not really science. It's just having a lot of fun and do add a lot of tiny dots, some little dapples here and there. Um, I really want this piece to really show the different colors that Axon could be. Um, so I'm just having a ball, adding tiny spots, big spots, little spots, and making sure that it's everything in between. The great thing about painting something like this is you can just have fun. You, you can just go nuts. You don't have to do it. It's not scientific. Spots are not scientific. If you look at a cow, they have all different types of spots and coloring. You can get away with a lot. I extend the colors into the ears, making sure that I am pulling it all together. Again, this is where the saved color comes in. Also here, I do decide my tan isn't tan enough, so I do actually color them again with a different color and decide to pull that just onto the nose of the um, brown, brown pie ball. I'm really pleased with how it's coming. I does need a white chest. I'm showing a white belly, but that's just so I'm prepared for the pink plan on adding later. I use the same pink for the ears as I do for the belly and anywhere else ear, um, oomph is required. I just I like it. So making sure the inside of the ears are all good before I attach them onto the heads. I don't want to have to try to fix those later. That would be impossible. Here's another piece of pink. I am adding it onto the little the little toe beans, aren't they so cute? As well as the belly. Here it's time to paint the eyes. I decided for the black and white pie ball, he would have bright blue eyes. And for the brown pie ball, he would have two different colored eyes. I thought that was really cool. And then for the, the middle one, because it's black and tan, he would have brown eyes. 
I do try to carry forward the expression that I had already determined for these guys into the eye. So as you can see, the little brown pie ball right there is looking suspiciously off to the side. To be fair, these actually guys do have a name. I'm making collars from them right now using this really cool ribbon that has some really neat texture. Um, I decided to name them. My husband suggested Smokey because it's bigger than a wiener dog. And I thought that was really cute because it's got three heads and it's bigger. So uh, meet Smokey. And I do actually use that on their dog tags you can see here, but I spell it a little bit differently. S-M-O-K-O-O-K-I-E. So they all have three letters on their dog tags. So Smokuki. And yeah, here is the ears finally on. I do use acetone glue to make that happen. Additionally, I do use some of the super glue to make it really firmly attached. But I do have to do some shadows and stuff, and I'm using my favorite pastels here. I do have two different kinds open. I have my regular kind, as well as an old box that my mom gave me that she had when she had her own craft store. Uh, you can see where I get it from. Here I am using my watercolor pencils, and I'm doing definition. I'm using them to make the eyes pop a little bit more, um, make the lines on the face a little bit more defined, and just make everything kind of more interesting to look at. I really love using watercolor pencils. Even now I'm using them for the whites of the eyes. This won't be the final look of the eyes, but it does help me get the design down, as well as when I do eventually add the white paint, it kind of adds a glow. So I'm adding still more additional um, pastels here and getting some additional color just throughout the whole piece. Feeling pretty good about it. Out on the side, I do spray him uh, to make sure that that does not run. It's not shown on video because I'm really terrible at filming. Um, so you can I tell you now that it has been sprayed to make sure that that everything that I've added is safe. Here, pulling together the collars I was making. Um, they each have their own colored collar, as well as a little buckle that I've glued on. Uh, this is just a piece of extra epoxy sculpt to turn them into tiny squares and then paint them black to make it look like a buckle for their collars. I thought that was a good idea. Now, with all the collars done, they need to be added to my dog. Smokey does need all three of his collars added. Got to weave them out and underneath the ears to make sure that those work. And now they don't get firmly glued to the whole head. They just get glued on. And so they actually do move a little, um, like a little accessory, but they don't come off. And they each have their own little name tag already attached and ready to go. Now, finally, I'm adding the whites of the eyes onto my lovely doggo here. Um, Smokey is looking more lively. And I do add it also to the nose as well. I'm loving the way he's kind of like, he's very cartoony. I like that design of him. Um, a little bit more goofy than some of my more serious pieces. Now, finally, I do have to fix up his little toe beans again because they wore off. Um, so once that's all done, I am gonna to switch to glazing them to make sure they don't wear off. This time around, I am not adding felt to his feet. Usually I do like adding felt, but this time I didn't want to because I wanted the toe, bean, the toe beans to be showcased. But I do also use hard coat all over the body. I do a nice, really thin coat. I found that my hard coat lately has been clouding and I didn't want that to happen. So I made a very conscious effort to make sure I didn't do that. And then also I did gloss on the eyes and look at them shine. Oh, he looks so good. Or she, she looks so good. Sorry, Smokey. Uh, she looks amazing. Um, I love her. I love her. She looks so good and the colors turned out so well. So yeah, she's done. Here is Smokey. She's all done and ready to go on to her new home. I can tell you now she was picked up pretty quick. My niece decided it was hers and it did. It went home with her. Smokey was an interesting project. It was purely just something I want to do after working on a character project like Venom and Carnage where it was purely based on the designs of a character whereas this is entirely mine there was no restrictions there was no boundaries other than it kind of looking like a duck swim to the end that was the only restrictions I put on myself I was able to choose the colors I was able to choose the design I was able to choose the names this was all me so I felt really good while doing this and it was actually really quick it looked looks like a lot of work, but the main design, the very early part that you saw me throw together with the pony was one evening. This didn't take too long to make. The video, I think, is actually taking longer. Um, but yeah, it turned out really great and I'm very proud of it. And if you like it, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, ring that bell notification, and I'll see you next time. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.